Hey guys, this is Tornin. Today we're going to be talking about budget replacements for expensive EDH staples. So these cards are cards are fit into a lot of different decks. Um, not necessarily every single one, but a lot of decks uh, will run these depending on what their colors are and stuff, uh, and depending on what the deck's actually doing. Um, some of these aren't going to be one for one matches, but they could save you money or a bunch of money, right? Like think about guys, it's freaking insane. So it's trying to just save you guys money while also getting as close to possible as we can, um, while also just being good and decently strong. Now you could obviously proxy if you wanted to get the more expensive option, of course, but some places don't like proxies and, you know, know that all that kind of stuff there's obviously you know a whole bunch of people's thoughts about proxies so i just wanted to kind of cover some cheaper examples that we could run here so make sure you subscribe make sure you share around the video all that kind of stuff we're on our road to 10,000 subscribers at the moment and you know i think this video is going to be great so let's get into it these are the different cards we're going to be covering at the moment so gaia's shieldred uh Rhystic study cyclonic rift demonic tutor parallel lives deflecting swat force of will dockside and teferi so these are all different cards that are going to fit into a lot of different edh decks um you know like stuff this any kind of deck that's going to be running like tokens and stuff like that in green is going to be wanting parallel lives or even anointed procession right um you know protection within red is harder to find free counter spells all that kind of stuff this is stuff that is going to fit into a lot of different decks so we're going to start off with shieldred who's currently sitting at 65 17 now i know that some of this is due to her being an absolute bonkers standard card so once she rotates out of standard Potentially we'll see her drop there. Um, the interesting thing with her is that she does a trigger on both drawing a card and when an opponent draws a card. So that's the issue there is that there's not really many cards that do it whenever you draw a card and whenever an opponent draws a card. So we're going to be losing out on a little bit of that. So we've got some cheaper examples though. So Fate Unraveler. Now Fate Unraveler at the moment is a little bit more expensive, but just literally got reprinted. It's going to deal one damage to someone whenever they draw a card. We've got Razorkin Needle is the same thing whenever someone draws a card it's going to deal one damage to it at the moment that's pre-ordering for 338 but it's also costing half as much right so in like big wheel decks shieldred's going to be really strong so these are decent kind of options to replace with shieldred um and you know you want to have some stuff that's whenever you draw a card and whenever an opponent draws a card so these are the ones that are like when an opponent draws a card so we've got underworld dreams here for 92 cents notion thief uh kind of punishing that card draw if an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps instead that player skips that draw and you draw a card right a good kind of card that you can cheat in to be able to steal other people's card draw we've got mind's eye whenever an opponent draws a card you can pay one to draw a card so this is not punishing them with dealing damage to them it's punishing them with you get to draw cards We've got Psychosis Crawler. So this is the opposite where when you draw a card, you're going to be dealing damage. This is to each opponent too, which is really, really nice. Um, yeah, so instead of, you know, dealing, uh, gaining life for whenever you draw a card, this is dealing damage when you draw cards. We've also got Star Cream Power Hungry, which is probably my favorite one for this. Now you do need to be the Monarch for this to be able to proc here. However, however, um, it's pretty easy to steal the Monarch with Starscream. He's a flying menace, haster, um, and you can get the Monarch back and boom, now you're drawing and making people lose life as again. Next, we've got Rhystic Study and good, you know, $41 here. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless they pay one. So we want to, so this one here, I'm focusing more on punishing people for drawing, uh, sorry, punishing people for casting spells. So I've got Mystic Remora, right? It's almost the exact same. Um, it's instead it's a non-creature spell. But here, while Mystic Remora is you draw a card um, unless they pay four Rhystic Studies, unless they pay one. This one is non-creature Rhystic anyone. But the good thing about Mystic uh, is that it costs one less, and it's very unlikely people are going to pay the four. Right? They're more likely to pay the one rather than the four. You could potentially get more draws off of Mystic Remora. However, you do have that cumulative up uh, upkeep, so you do need to pay that to keep it around. But even like you know one Turk like. Let's say one, two turn cycles, 
you could easily kind of keep this up for a bit and be able to get a lot of card draw from it. We've got Archivist of Ogma. So this is instead of focused around uh, casting a spell, this is instead focused around whenever they search their library. Now, at the very start of the game, people are going to be searching their libraries a lot for like lands and stuff, whenever they crack like an evolving wilds, whenever they like, you know, use a rampant growth, that kind of stuff, or whenever they just tutor anything up, basically, you're going to gain a life and draw a card. So... Archivist is less likely, I think, to get a removal. It also has flash as well, uh, and it's got the bonus of gaining life here, and the opponent can't prevent you from doing this. So if you get this in really early here, you could draw a lot of cards too. We've got Ghostly Pill for us, so that whenever it becomes untapped, you can pay two and draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. And the good part about this is that the opponent, uh, your opponent can't prevent this. Um, right? Like they can't pay the one to prevent it or anything. It does instead of, you know, being any card they cast, it's just cards from their hand, uh, from anywhere other than their hand. But nowadays there's so many like exile cards or, you know, cards from the graveyard, etc. That you're still going to get decent value off of this. And it's less likely to get removal, I think, than a Ristic will. We've got Mangara the Diplomat. So this is whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card, or also, whenever an opponent attacks with creatures, if two or more are attacking you, then draw a card. So you've got two different ways to car draw a card here. Um, casting two spells later on in the game happens a lot more often. Uh, obviously, you know, the Ristic is going to be later in the game, I think, less likely uh, that... Like, less likely that you're going to be able to draw cards off of it, because people can just pay one. But Mangara, they don't have the option of preventing it. We've got Mind's Eye here. Again, whenever an opponent draws a card, pay one and you draw a card. Boom. You know, that's basically a guaranteed draw. Um, you do have to pay the one to be able to draw a card, but it's still pretty decent. We've got Nezeril Primal Tide. So this is whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, draw a card. So very similar to Mystic Remora. Uh, however, you know, you've got a couple different options here. One, you've got the option of exiling it and then returning it. So flickering it. You've got no maximum hand size attached to this too. And an opponent, like... It can't pay to prevent you from drawing the card there. We've also got Painful Quandary, which is punishing that card spell, uh, that casting. Uh, they lose five lives or discard a card when they uh, cast a spell. Really nice. And then finally, Spell Tithe Enforcer. Either they pay one or they sacrifice a permanent whenever they cast a spell. So uh, as opposed to drawing cards for you, this is instead making them potentially sacrifice stuff or pay one extra. I think that this is almost just as punishing as Ristic. Ristic, obviously, card draw is really great, but punishing them and making them either pay one or sack something is really good. All right, next up, we've got Cyclonic Rift. So the thing I was looking for here is uh, asymmetrical kind of board wipes, mostly that just return things to the hand. There is a lot of asymmetrical board wipes, but I want ones that specifically focused on returning things to people's hands here. Uh, and this is like pretty expensive, right? $30 and 31. This is costing you seven to be able to do the, make it so every opponent does it. Uh, so we've got Aetherize here. A very, very cheap version of this, uh, but it's only things that are attacking. So you do still have the option of kind of keeping this up as an instant. So that way someone goes and attacks you, boom, return everything to their hand. The interesting thing here as well is that things that go back to their hand, uh, if a token goes back to your hand, it ceases to exist. Uh, if, you know, you were instead to kill it, then they can get a whole bunch of death procs off of it. Returning to hand is very good because, you know, they, it sets them behind a lot uh, and they don't have the option of potentially like bringing stuff back from the graveyard if they're playing black or white. We've got River's Rebuke here, return all non-land permanents target player control. So this is specifically targeted to one person. It does still cost six, but if you've got a way to be able to copy this or something, or if just one player has a huge board, this is a way to just remove that board. We've got Scourge of Fleets and Spectral Deluge. So both of these are more similar to that uh, Cyclonic Rift. Unfortunately, Spectral Deluge is uh, a sorcery, so you can't use it at any time. Same with Scourge of Fleets, you can only use it on your turn, but um, it's going to be able to potentially remove a huge amount of stuff, right? Uh, it is only creatures, uh, and it's based off the lands that you've got, but it's still a decent, like, removal, in my opinion, in including the fact that you can, like, you know, foretell Spectral um, Deluge, really nice. We've got Wave Goodbye. So if you're the only one playing plus one, plus ones, or, you know, most people aren't, then you could return basically, you know, the whole board to people's hands as well here, except, you know, it's costing four instead of seven and $4 instead of $30. 
Then we've got Perplexing Test here. We can return all non-tokens or creature tokens. So if you're playing no creature token stuff, then boom, you just return all the tokens. They all cease to exist. Or you could return all creature tokens. Uh, sorry, all non-token creatures if you're playing a creature token deck. And then boom, all your creature tokens are still there, but the other person doesn't have them anymore. And then we've got Whelming Wave. So if this one's, I've, I've included this one in here more, more for a meme kind of thing. But if you're playing a Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus or Serpent deck, then this is a a really cheap way to be able to return all creatures to people's hands. Now, the other thing is that while these ones here are all kind of focused around creatures, uh, except for River's Rebuke, uh, the Cyclonic Rift just has that extra like returning um, like enchantments and artifacts, unfortunately. So we can't exactly match it, but like, you know, River's Rebuke is probably our closest one that we can get here. And again, that only affects one person. Now, next, we've got Demonic Tutor. So the big things about Demonic Tutor is that it tutors to hand and it costs two. So that's what I was kind of looking for, like things that are cheap and they tutor to hand. So, and this is $41. So we've got Dark Petition to start off with. Now, this one obviously here costs five instead of that two. However, it does tutor to your hand, but it refunds three. Uh, if you've got two instants or uh, sorceries in the graveyard. So later on in the game, right, um, this is going to be essentially a Demonic Tutor. Right, so it, it's cost five, but you're refunding three, so therefore it's only going to cost two. Uh, and then, as long as you've got a way to be able to cast this, it's essentially similar. Uh, you can't, you have to use it later in the game, though. Unfortunately, demonic tutor, you have the option of just using it turn two if you wanted to, but you're also saving like you know what forty bucks, forty US dollars. Profane tutor, this I really love. Now. You do need to put it into suspend, so you're not going to have it available until two turns from now. Uh, sorry, three turns from now, because a, a removal and then a removal. If you have a way to be able to like remove the time counters, so like time travel, then you've got it going to get it faster. Or if you cascade into it, because it's mana value zero. Uh, this is just search for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle. I am okay saving you know 40 bucks if it means that i have to wait a little bit to be able to do my tutor but it still tutors to hand and stuff which is good we've got archmage ascension i did not know this card existed and oh my god um i need to put this into my foxglove deck when i get to it uh, at the beginning of each end step if you drew two or more cards you may put a quest counter on it and as long as it has six or more quest counters if you draw a card instead you can search your library for a card and put it into your hand and then shuffle in Foxglove, this is going to be insane, right? Oh, man. That's actually a bonkers card. I did not know that card existed. Now, obviously, you know, we're in blue instead of black. It is going to take a little bit to be able to get online and stuff, but then it's going to make it so that essentially any time you draw, you're casting Demonic Tutor. We've got Cruelty of Gix. Now, the big difference here is that this is the only one that kind of costs a lot more. This is going to cost five instead of two, but you do have other options along the way to be able to do stuff. You do lose the life to be able to tutor here, but, you know, you've got a Resurrection tapped on here. You've got a Removal here too. Um, sorry, a Discard from people's hands, and it's costing a dollar. And then Beseech the Queen. So this is going to cost you three black to search something equal to the number of, or sorry, equal or less than the number of lands you've got reveal it put into your hand. So three black to be able to do this. You know, that's pretty good um, later in the game. I like it a lot. And then we've got Case of the Sk Stash Skeleton. So as long as you have no um, black skeleton, so it's going to pay two. You're going to create a black skeleton with menace and can't block because it's suspected. You just need to destroy that somehow, and then boom, now you're going to be able to pay two and do an arcane, uh, sorry, do a de demonic tutor. We've got ring sight here, so you're going to pay blue, um, and it's got to match a legendary color, a legendary creature you control in regards to its color, but also 30 cents. And you've got the ring tempts you on top of that. And then we've got wish core talisman two. You're going to be able to pay one, tap it, and pass it over to someone else. Now, if you could make a deal with someone else, be like, look, I'm going to pass this to you as long as you pass it back when you make your wish. That's two. Two demonic tutors attached to this for what is it going to cost you four, essentially. Not too bad. Next, we've got Teferi's Protection, $32. Uh, the main things that I was looking for here are giving protection to everything or, uh, or phasing things out, protecting your board, essentially, and potentially protecting yourself, too. So, first up, we've got Perch Protection. I love this. This is my new favorite card. Uh, absolutely bonkers. Now, uh, a couple things. You know, we've got four. We've got six costs instead of three, so it is a bit more expensive. And you do need to gift a card to someone else for it to work. Um, 
However, it's the same kind of thing. You do well, you will get four creature tokens to be able to do it, and you do need to gift an extra turn. But you can use this to politic so much, right? Um, so you're going to create some blue to creature tokens. You're going to phase everything out. Your life total can't change, and you gain protection from everything. It's essentially Teferi's protection, but for birds. And you're going to create, like, getting those extra birds there. I don't think is worth the extra three and having to gift an extra turn. But, you know, saving, what, 30 bucks? I think it's worth it. We've got Clever Concealment. We're going to phase everything out. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to phase out our lands. So if they are destroying our lands, that's annoying. But it is an instant with Convoke. So we can do this. We can tap four down, phase everything out. Now, this is a bit more expensive, but... It's got that option of phasing everything out and the Convoke to kind of make up for it. We've got Galadriel's Dismissal. So this is going to phase out all our creatures, or we can use it offensively to phase out opponent's creatures, right? Uh, it's not got the protection for ourselves, unfortunately, but uh, same with actually Clever Concealment. You don't need to exile it after you cast it. So you do have the option of being able to bring it back somehow. If you've got, you know, a way to be able to play an instant or sorcery from your graveyard or, you know, recur it or something. Uh, you also can just play one white to phase a creature out if you just need a quick kind of removal there. So this one here is for all your non-land permanents. This one here is just creatures. We've also got Guardian of Faith. You can flash this in to phase out your creatures, um, which is nice. And it's got a body attached to it. Uh, just being able to phase out your creatures doesn't protect you, unfortunately, but not too bad. And then we've got no more here as well, which is phase out any number of creatures you control. But you also have the other option here of paying four to deal damage to everything on the board. So a board wipe kind of attached to it. And then uh, if a creature you control would deal damage this way, exile it. And it's only 20 cents. 20 cents. And then we've got ripples of potential. Uh, ripples of potential. So you get to phase out. Uh, sorry, you get to proliferate and then choose any number of permanents you control that had a counter put on them this way, and then they phase out. So technically, if you have counters on your lands, then you can phase the lands out as well. But this is like costing two. It's in blue. You've got, you know, five bucks instead of 20 or 30 bucks. Um, and it doesn't unfortunately protect yourself, but it has the additional proliferate on there, which isn't too bad. All right, next up, we've got Dockside, 85 bucks. What I was looking for here is ways to be able to create a bunch of token, uh, a bunch of treasures, primarily based off of what the opponent has. Dockside's a very, very hard one to be able to match because of the sheer quickness of it. It only costs two. That's the major issue there. So we're not going to be able to get close to that. We're going to get pretty close with like Cabin Horde Dragon here. When it deals combat damage to a player, you're going to create a treasure equal to the amount of artifacts that player controls. Not too bad. Uh, but it's also got Flying Trample and Haste and costs X less where X is the greatest number of artifacts an opponent controls. So if an opponent's kind of ramping up a whole bunch with artifacts and stuff, this could get pretty cheap. And then because it's got Flying Trample Haste, you just swing it at them straight away, create a bunch of treasures. We've got Horde Hauler. I actually really like this one and I am surprised that it's not a bit more expensive. I think it was because it's only a rare and it was in a pre-con. No, it's not a pre-con. Uh, either way, it's got Trample. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you're going to create a treasure token for each artifact they control. you got to be deal the combat damage there. It's a 5-5 five, five, crew 3, not too bad with Trample, uh, but it's also 20 cents as opposed to $80. Mahardi, I love Mahardi. If things are dying on your turn, this is a way to be able to create so many treasures. Not very close to getting the instant treasures like Dockside is. Uh, it does rely on creatures dying, but you know you could potentially get some bonkers stuff off Mahardi and you know 17 cents. We've got Force of Will. I was looking for a free counter spell here, right? Uh, or, or very, very, very cheap. So this is 47. We've got Flare of Denial. This is five bucks. You need to sacrifice a non-token blue instead of exiling a card from your hand, unfortunately. So you do need to sacrifice a creature to be able to use this. But, you know, five bucks as opposed to 80, uh, sorry, 45 bucks. We've got foil here. I'm actually surprised this one's not more expensive. You just need to discard a land and another card rather than pay this cost. So this is discard two uh, and it's 40 cents rather than discard, uh, sorry, exile one from your hand and pay one life. Discarding, I think, is honestly potentially even better than, like, exiling card. I don't know. I, I really love foil. I've, yeah, I haven't seen this card before. I'm, I love it. Next up, we've got, so, so as you'll see, there's only two here because a free counter spell is not very easy to come by. We've got Deflecting Swap, $35. So this is, I was looking for very cheap or 
free ways to be able to protect in red. I want specifically protection within red or or things that would be comboing with red that are free. So start out, we've got Bolt Bend. So Bolt Bend's only going to cost you one red. Not free, unfortunately, but it's one red. It also doesn't rely on you having your commander out. So you can change the target or uh, tar change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. So this does unfortunately need to be uh, a single target, but if someone's single target removing your commander uh, and your commander is, you know, power four or greater with, you know, you've got red in there, your commander most likely has red. It's very likely that it's got power four or greater, like I'd say 50%, if not 75, maybe higher. Um, you know, I think that this is worth it for, you know, for a budget option of saving 42 bucks. We've got Commandeer here. Now, unfortunately, Commandeer is uh, a blue card and you need to exile two cards, but it's going to be free if you pay the pay the two cards. It's also 50 cents or uh, 60 cents instead of, you know, 60 bucks or whatever it was. I, I'm losing track. For 35 bucks. Getting control of target non-creature spell. You may choose new targets for it. So technically you can use this to steal people's artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, if you want to. Or you could just use it to change whatever their removal is, um, which is nice and hilarious. Like, you know, they've, they've got like a, what, hell to pay or something like that. Whatever the ones are that like remove X or deal X damage to five targets and stuff. And then you just rearrange it to attack their stuff instead. We've got Imp's Mischief, change the target of the target spell with uh, a single target. So this is a black option for it. You lose life, unfortunately, to go alongside it, but you're in black. So life loss doesn't matter. Return the favor. Again, this is kind of like pay three, redirect something, kind of like a belt, a bolt bend. And then you also can pay one extra to copy it, which is nice. And you can choose new targets for the copy. Uh, and only like, you know, two bucks. Next, we've got Parallel Lives, 33 bucks for a token doubler. So I'm looking specifically for token doublers for 34 bucks or cheaper. Adrix and Nev, easy. Uh, so this is five bucks or 450 now. Thanks to it, it is going to cost the same, but you need blue in your card. In your card, but you do have Ward Two attached to this. It is a creature, which means it's more likely to get removed because there's more likely board whites for creatures than you know enchantments and stuff. But for saving, you know what, uh, thirty bucks, not too bad. We've got Ga a Kaya Kaya Geist Hunter. Now this will unfortunately only double the ones that you do on your turn. It's only until end of turn, uh, but it's in very different colors as well. So I usually try and match the colors well, but it's not going to work here because of the fact that, uh, yeah, it's it's green. <laughs> Pure green ones aren't aren't cheap. But we do have an option here if you you know in uh, like what Abzan. Um, or if you're just not in green at all, you've got 261 here for that Kaya. Um, not too bad. You do need to obviously, you know, plus one her a few times or proliferate or something. Uh, it's, yeah, I actually should pick this up. Uh, I think I should pick this up actually now that I'm thinking about it because this would be bonkers in my new uh, Incubate deck. We've got Primal Vigor. If one or more uh, tokens would be created on the battlefield, twice that many. So this is essentially a Parallel Lives um, plus, like, is it's a doubling season. So this is a doubling season, except it's for everyone. Now, if you're the person who's going to be putting out a lot of tokens and putting out a plus one, plus ones, that's fine. You just need to build your deck around this. You're saving, you know, 30 bucks. You're going to cost one more, but you are going to get a lot of tokens, right? It's the same effect. Everyone will get a lot of tokens, though, so it's going to be bonkers for everyone. But if you build around it, you are potentially going to be, like, if you're putting a card like this in your deck, you're more likely to to be building around it so I, I think that honestly it's potentially worth it as well as it's just a very fun card all right next we've got guys so this is the big one you know 800 bucks or something i think there's one from like a world champion deck but i don't think it's illegal uh 821 bucks so we've got growing whites of it's Lim at uh, it's Lamoc. so i put this into uh a few of my different decks Right, I put this into my Pantlaza deck, and I think it's within my, uh, what's that deck? My F Merfolk ha Hasbro deck as well. So, um, you, as long as you have four or more creatures on the turn this even, e even on the turn this comes out, right? You're going to be able to flip it and turn it into a Gaius Cradle. That is three dollars. Three dollars um, to save, you know, potentially eight hundred dollars. 
Uh, that's insanely good. Uh, it, you know, it does have that more high upfront cost, uh, as opposed to guys, which is just a land that you put out. It does have, you know, three to be able to do it. It does have a little bit stapled onto it though. Look at the top four of your library, reveal a c creature, put it into your hand. That's not too bad. Like this is, this is a card by itself, that part. So keeping that around is not too bad. Uh, and you do need to have those four more creatures, but to save like, you know, freaking insane amount of money, I think that's worth it. We also have Circle of Dreams Druid uh, from the uh, Forgotten Realms set. So I picked up one of these for my Voja deck. It's paying three. You get to do a Gaia's, right? Really good. Uh, and that's going to cost you six bucks as opposed to, you know, 800. And we have Silvala. So Silvala isn't the exact same as Gaia's, keep in mind. So Gaia's is every creature you control, while Silvala is the highest power among creatures you control um but you do get to draw cards or other people get to draw cards as well potentially which means she's potentially gonna stick around for longer as well because people like kind of having the option for card draw but you know five bucks as opposed to 800 uh it is going to be as i said based off of the greatest power but it's also mana in any combination of colors you don't need to just add green in this uh really really nice we've also got xenagos which is red green Red, green, and it's also based off the number of creatures you control. Again, you know, more upfront cost here for four rather than free. Uh, but it doesn't use a land drop to start off, uh, like, you know, having a land drop as well is good. But, you know, and you also have the option of having some red mana there if you've got like a whole bunch of, you know, if, if you're in Gruul or whatever extension from Gruul you've got, Jund or whatever, then it's good. All right. Now the last one for the one ring. This is 80 bucks and... I don't know. <laughs> I, I honestly don't think that I can find a replacement that's going to be close enough to the one ring. Like I can find a part that does this, giving you protection from everything until end of turn. Like, you know, you've got like Teferis or something like that, right? That's, oh, that's not protection for you. That's protection for everything on your board. But still, like you've got, there is options to give everything protection from stuff. Right, it'll give you protection for everything. There is options as well to be able to draw cards based off of the amount of, you know, token counters you've got on or something. There's just nothing that really matches enough to the One Ring where I can be like, here, this could be a good replacement for the One Ring. I might be wrong. Uh, and if you guys have a good replacement for the One Ring, let me know. I honestly cannot think of one that matches enough that I can suggest it here, as opposed to all of the other ones, which I think, you know, th the closest was like Shieldred was harder to do because you have like either half of her you could do. Um, while, you know, the One Ring's got like the three different sections in it, including the fact that it's indestructible as well. And, you know, only cost four and it's colorless, so it fits into every freaking color. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys had a wonderful day and goodbye.